Uh, have you looked into catastrophic igneous origin models of salt domes that creationists like Steph Harima, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Harima, have suggested? Anybody? Igneous origins of salt. Salt and igneous doesn't go together in my head, but no. I'm not by any means an expert in that. You heard Usually of what you'll find here in Australia, we have some big volcanic uh, flows, e.g. up on the top of the uh, Toowoomba Range, you'll pass through a huge uh, volcanic rock. But the d salt, if you want to use the word in its most generic sense, uh, that pours out of there as you get water flowing through the actual lava, down through the cracks, down through the holes, like Glenn showed you before. Mostly what comes out is the calcium type salts. I don't know of any igneous theory for a deposition of sodium chloride, which I'm assuming is what he's meaning uh, in that. We do use salt domes, by the way, in exploring for oil because they have a habit of pushing into and then the oil actually will accumulate in structures associated with that salt dome. So they are good for pointing to you uh, to where possible structures are, yet where oil has been trapped. But so far, I've never come across any successful story about salt coming out as an igneous deposit. Calcium sulfides, calcium salts, sulfates, calcium chlorides, all of those things I found in association with volcanic rocks, but rarely sodium chloride. And um, yeah, I was going to say that actually going on to what we're doing in just a second, which we'll move straight on to in a moment, on the plane flight that we went from um, Alice Springs to Yulara, uh, which is where Ayers Rock was, as you fly over, you look down and you see the huge salt flats that are all over the desert down there. Uh, and that actually goes into what we're going to get towards the end of, which is at one point Australia being a bit warmer. So I've always associated salt and and, and certainly sodium chloride as being a, um, a more of a sedimentary formation or topographical formation rather than it being igneous. But uh, I'll look it up. I'll look up this uh, this guy um, and see what he's he's saying, and we'll see if we can come Joe, up. Joe, I'll just throw in one yeah. one more comment there, Joe, because you may remember that as we flew out to Ayers Rock, which we'll be talking about in a moment, Uluru, et cetera, we passed over some lakes, some of which mm -hmm. were dry, and many of which that had algae in them that were pink. Now, the salt from those pink lakes has a much higher price than the ordinary crummy-looking uh, dirt-filled um, sodium chloride that evaporates out in the desert, and you may have already bought uh, at exorbitant prices some Himalayan salt, from some of the salt beds up there because it's got a lovely pink colour. And I, I certainly like pink salt, but it doesn't take millions of years to form. It forms as your floods come in and you get algae growths, which have a pink tinge and you end up having a beautiful pink lake. And uh, so don't go to the Himalayas for your salt uh, where they sell bottles of it extracted from 300 million year old rock or something and then they tell you to use it by June next year. It's just ridiculous. You can come and get free stuff from Australia or watch it on the plane flights over the outback in, in Australia on the way to Uluru Airs Rock. 